Good morning, good morning. This is Dr. Herbert Harris, and this is our success mentorship class, number 174. Wow. Success mentorship class number 174. Whew. Okay, folks, you know, today our topic is how to overcome lack of focus. And of course, our class is based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And these 12 Universal Laws of Success represent your cookbook, your recipe book for success. Our book is available on Amazon. Be sure to get the Super Achiever Edition. It's on available on most of the digital websites. And it is also available on our website, herbertharris.com, and on our special website, www.the12uls.com. This topic for today, how to overcome lack of focus, follows in our traditional path of uh, literally plugging into what is, plugging into the transformations that are taking place right now in our lives to make this year our year for outrageous success. I'd like to open with a quote. One quote says that lack of focus leads to lack of progress. I'll say that again. Lack of focus leads to lack of progress. When you have lack of progress, that means nothing good is going on. <laughs> the lack of focus leads to lack of progress. John uh, Carmack had a nice quote, and he said, focus is a matter of deciding what things you will not do. Focus is the matter of deciding what things you will not do. So. These, these, uh, these quotes set us up right now to open our minds and prepare to receive the message. So let us do our meditation. Let's sit straight up in our seats, put our feet flat on the floor, put our hands palm down upon our knees, close our outer eyes, open our inner eyes, and take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And in this relaxed state, let us affirm, I am at peace with myself together. I am at peace with myself. Once more, I am at peace with myself. Slowly. And in this relaxed state, our minds are open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm together, my mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Once more, my mind is open, receptive, All right, all right. Thank you so much. Let's see, we some we have our members ready to enter the room. Great, great, great. Those of you who are not members of the Success Mentorship Network, definitely join. The link is beneath the broadcast. 
Uh, one of the great things is you get a chance to participate in the discussion after we do our class, and you get access to all of our older and former teachings and a lot more. So let's look at this, this, this idea of how to overcome lack of focus. And I want to put this in a context of, you might call it a universal context. And basically, in the universe, we have certain, I'll call them realizations. Number one is order. That there's an order for things in the universe. Number two, principle. There's a way that things operate. One of the reasons we wrote the 12 Universal Laws of Success was to give people a, a recipe, a cookbook, a path to achieve the things that they desire. The third principle is choice. Choice is powerful. Choice is really what it's all about. When we start talking about lack of focus, choice is going to be key. And then the principle of time. All of these things happen over time. Time is another issue. But look at order, principle, and choice. So when we think about the idea of focus, I guess the first question is, how do you know your life is out of focus? How do you know that you lack focus in your life? <laughs> well, think about this. If you're driving, you're going on a trip, you have a, a, a GPS in your car, you put in your destination, and the GPS tells you which way to go, and all is well, and you're driving along, and then all of a sudden, the GPS says, recalculating. So what happened? Oh, you made a wrong turn. And then it tells you how to read. It tells you, make a U-turn, turn left, turn right. So the GPS, we'll call it the Global Positioning System, says relative to your destination, the path that you're on right now will not take you there, and you should make the following adjustments. In life, when our life lacks focus, our GPS, our feeling nature tells us we're unhappy tells us that the, the stuff that's going on in our lives right now is not what we want to be going on, that our thoughts are not the ones we want, our emotions are not the ones we want, that our habits are undermining us and that we're surrounded by unproductive people. When we are in that state, when we feel that life is not going the way that we want it to, do, to go, and those of you who are listening, think about, I mean, look at where you are right now. Are you happy with your situation? Are you content with the people around you? Are you satisfied in your, in your pursuit to make a living? So if things are not going the way you want them to go, then one of the keys to determine what's up is the, the power of focus. So let's look for a moment. One of the essence, the, the, the thing about focus is that what you recognize in your focus, in your mind, you energize. And what you energize, that vibration you create inside, you reckon, you realize. So what you recognize, you energize. What you energize, you realize. So now there's a, another aspect of focus, and it's intention and attention. So when we look at our lives, we may have the intention of accomplishing things. We have the intention of, of, of creating wealth, the intention of getting a degree. Whatever the things that we would like to do, be, and have is in our intention consciousness. But then we have our attention consciousness. So intention is basically that what we would like to be Attention is what we give our energy to, our vibration to. And so when we want to make our life happy, we want to have our intention, the things that we want to happen, congruent with our intention, where we, could, where we put our energies, where we put our concerns. Considering this now, if our attention and our intention are not in the same vibration, we don't get the results we like. 
So we're at a point now where we want to change the focus in our lives. We want to change our lives. We want to create a new vision for ourselves. We have some goals. We have some dreams. We have a, a vision. We have a purpose. But right now, the progress that we are making is not sufficient. It does not make us happy. There's a nice story I often tell about the dog sitting on the nail. The, the story is a, a stranger's walking by and he sees a dog sitting on the porch and the dog is whimpering. The owner sitting there is looking at the dog and the stranger says, Sir, your dog is in pain. The owner says, yep. He says, uh, well, why, is the, why is the dog in pain? Because he's sitting on a nail. So then the stranger says, well, well, why doesn't the dog get off the nail? And the owner says, because it doesn't hurt badly enough. And so when our life is out of focus, if it doesn't hurt badly enough, it's very possible for us to continue along this path of mediocrity, where our life is not giving us the things that we want. Welcome, Lundy, one of my classmates. Okay, J.C. Miles from the Barbados. Oh, wow, we have a great group on Instagram. Thanks so much for joining us. So when we're talking about overcoming this focus, overcoming lack of focus, it's whatever's not going on in our lives the way that we want it to be. We have something very powerful. We can make a choice. The essence of focus is choice. We can now choose to change our focus. The first law of success says that whatever a mind can conceive and believe, whatever a mind thinks in its heart, it experiences. So if we're not experiencing the life we want right now, then our thoughts and our heart are not working together or working against us. If we want to change our present condition now to create a life that's more focused on the things we want, the second law of success says, be not conformed to this world. You don't have to stay stuck in whatever your situation is, that you can transform it by thinking a new thought, by doing different things. Albert Einstein says, insanity is doing the same things over and over and expecting a different result. So each of us on this call, on this class this morning, if you're not happy with where your life is right now, if you're not happy with the things that you're getting and doing, then change your focus. One of the profound principles of focus is whatever you focus on grows. If we look at the world as a great circle, you have the yin and yang aspect of the world. You have basically a circle has 360 degrees and you have 180 degrees of positivity, of can do, of the good things. But then you have 180 degrees of can't do, of the negative things. And that is just how it is. You know, there was a, a movie called Oh God with a fellow named George Burns, an old actor, and he was portraying God in the movie. And the, the young man, the kid asked him, well, if you're God, says, why do you make pain? Why do you make sickness? Why do you make bad stuff? And God says, you know, even though I'm God, I've never been able to figure out how to make an up without a down, how to make light without darkness, how to make life without death. And so the nature of the universe, the order of the universe says that there's always going to be a yin-yang aspect, a negative and a positive. And so the idea of focus is your capacity to choose, as it says, choose this day whom you will serve. You can serve the power of negativity of can't do and literally have an entire life based on the things you can't do, the things you can't have, the bad things that happen to you. Or you can choose to focus on the good things, the positive things, the flowers. So when we talk about overcoming lack of focus, I think one very fundamental agreement is we will operate in the 180 degrees of positivity. See, the universe is totally abundant. There's always enough of whatever we need. The universe is completed is created complete. So anything you need is always there. There's always enough of whatever you need. But our perspective, our perception, and our interpretation of that perception may, may put us in a point where in a sea of abundance, we see lack and limitation. 
In the sea of joy, we see pain and suffering, insecurity, doubt. So let us look at this. How do we overcome lack of focus? The first thing we have to do is to focus on the things that we want. We have to choose the things that we desire to see. We have to choose the life that we want to live. So let's look at these six steps to help overcome lack of focus. Step number one, to realize you can only focus on one thing at a time. I know in this age of multitasking and instantaneous success, that may be a challenge, but when we talk about order and principle, you can only focus on one thing at a time. Think about this. The sunlight is outside the window right now. That sun is shining on the grass and giving it the, the necessary vibrations to grow. If we take a magnifying glass and focus that very same sunlight on that very same grass, it can cause the grass to burn. And so whatever the concentrated vibration is around us, when we focus on one thing at a time, we put that vibration at our command. See, focus is like a laser beam as opposed to a light bulb. When we talk about getting the results that we like and we, that we desire in our lives, let us look at the idea of what we call continuous focus, which means that whatever the particular task is at hand, to focus on that task from beginning to end, and we call it a cycle of completion, to start it, to do it, and to complete it and then go to the next thing. If we do that, we can strengthen our ability to focus. So you can only focus on one thing at a time. Do the things necessary to bring about that which you desire, complete it, and then move on to the next thing. When you start to choose what you must do, to get that particular task completed. One of the reasons we, in chapter seven of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, we really get into the law of action, which gives you a formula to get things done. So once you see what you want, once you make a plan, once you act on it, if you follow the formula, you'll get it done. So one thing at a time. Number two, this is critical, folks. Be in good health physically fit and full of energy. There's a, uh, an Arabian proverb and it says, he who has help has hope. He who has hope has everything. You see, if we're not in good health, let's go back to intention plus attention. If we're not in good health, we can have the intention of achieving success, the intention of doing the things that need to be done. But our lack of good health, the pain, whatever that negative health experience that we're having will pull our attention away. When our attention, and yeah, I guess the essence of health challenges is that they generally demand your immediate consistent and continuous attention. I've had a few health talent challenges and I, I'm sure that many of you have had a few. And when you have a health challenge, a serious health challenge, that's all you're thinking about. Putting all the forces in your mind and your consciousness together to get well. So that second key to be in good health and physically fit. The third key. But, you know, I just thought of something. You know, one of the things I love about doing these classes, ideas come to me. You know the parable of the talents? And it tells about how God gave one servant one talent and then two talents and five talents. And the idea is whatever you gift you've been given by the creator, to use it, to work with it. And the talent, the, the servant who only got one talent, didn't do anything with it, he hid it, and God took it back. Well, think about this, health. The body that we live in, the physical, mental, and spiritual body we live in is the greatest gift from God, and so it is our obligation to maintain it properly. <laughs> you 
God gave us the health, the body, and it's our obligation to keep it in good shape. So now the third key to overcome lack of focus. This is critical. Have clearly defined goals that complement and are congruent with your vision and your purpose. The whole chapter on vision and goal setting, it, it, the scripture says it. Write the vision and make it plain. Every success book you ever read says you must have a definite specific goals. Your goals must be specific. They must be measurable. They must be set in advance. They must be realistic based on where you are. They must cover a certain time period. If you do not have clearly defined goals, you cannot be focused. I'm going to say that again. If you do not have clearly defined goals, you cannot be focused. And that may be the challenge for many of us because our goals are not clearly defined enough. Most of us say, well, hey, I'd like to be happy. Well, specifically, what does that mean? When you start to define happiness, that's a very broad goal. You'll find that that idea, that vision of happiness may mean having a certain amount of money, may mean having a certain amount of uh, personal relationships, may mean having certain habits. And so if we don't have clearly defined goals, focus is out of the question. For those of you who are listening today, if you don't have clearly defined, I'm going to take it even further, clearly defined written goals, written clearly and concisely in such a way that you can act on it, you can never achieve focus. The interesting thing about life is this. Life is like a garden. And so we look at focus as planting the flowers in the garden. And the flowers are our good ideas, our good projects, our good habits, our good relationships. If we look at life as a garden, then focus means putting our attention and our intention into cultivating those flowers, those good things. But the yin-yang aspect of the universe says there's always going to be weeds. You don't have to plant weeds. And so you must not only have a, the flowers in mind, the definite specific goals, but you must also be aware that you must maintain the environment for those flowers. You must pull up weeds. So focus is a, can be like a sifting and sorting process now of doing and saying what you want, but also being aware of the reality of what must be done to, to manifest that that you want. If, I, if there's a general rule, I'd say most people experience lack of focus because they don't have clearly defined goals. When I think of weeds, weeds are like uncontrolled emotions. And so when you start planting those gardens, those flowers, those weeds start growing, you got to go pull them up. In life, those uncontrolled negative emotions that keep popping up, you can't do it. I don't have it. I don't have what it takes. You got to pull them out. The fourth key, the fourth step to overcoming lack of focus is you have to have faith in your own ability. You have to believe in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, it won't happen. There's a subtlety here. You know, we talk about faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So as a retired attorney, evidence is specific items that demonstrate a particular perspective. So a gun may be a part of the evidence of a, of a, of a shooting, for example. So when we say faith, it means that we must have the evidence of things not seen is we have to have a relationship with that which you cannot see based on our desire to have it manifest. Mm. Wow. This idea of faith in your own ability requires that you be focused, but also that you have desire. So let's look at this for a moment. 
we say that there's a formula. C plus, conceive it, believe it, you can achieve it. C plus B equals A. Conceive it, believe it, you can achieve it. If focus is the key to achieving success in your life, then desire is the wind beneath the wings of focus. When we desire things, it's like the dog sitting on the nail, and when that nail hurts badly enough, that dog will take action. Similarly, in our lives, if we're not happy with the way things are going, when we decide to make that change, when we take, when we choose to make that change, we can bring it about. Our ability to manifest that which we desire varies directly with our level of desire. So we can have focus. You have a little bit of focus and you get a little bit of results. But if you, if you have intense focus, you get intense results. So desire is the wing, the wind beneath the wings of focus. And focus are the wings that carry you from your where you are to where you want to go. Number five, realize that all distractions are equal. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you know, distractions are like weeds. Not only are distractions equal, but they're equally counterproductive. Reverend Ike used to say, the better the excuse, the worse it is. Anytime you can make a, an excuse for your lack of achievement, the better the excuse, the worse it is. Wow. So when we realize that all distractions are equal, it means that we have to make different choices. We often say, keep your eye on the prize. But anything or anybody that keeps you from keeping your eye on the prize is a distraction. There's some serious distractions. You can be on your path to realizing your particular goals focused and you let crisis management jump in. Crisis management. And many times it's other people's crisis. Okay. Other people's crisis can interrupt your flow to your dreams and your goals. And I'm not saying that we have to be callous to other people, but just be aware. There's some people that truly need your attention, attention at that time, regardless of your intention, your attention. And it's all right to give it to them, but be aware that sometimes there are people who, if you're the go-to person, I have a friend who's the go-to person. Whenever there's a problem, they go to that person. If you're the go-to person, you may want to pay some attention to that. Because if everybody comes to you with their problems, the question arises, are you really helping them when you solve their problems? Sometimes we have to be like the mother bird. We have to kick that bird out the nest. So just be aware of that. That's a distraction to keep you from being focused, crisis management. Sometimes it's your own crisis, <laughs> okay? We can create our own crisis through procrastination. We, be, we can have the intention and the attention to be focused, but if we don't take care of things the way we need to, like look at that garden again. If we don't pull up those weeds, if we just focus on our plants and our flowers, don't pull up those weeds, sooner or later those weeds will consume the, plow, the, the flowers. Similarly, procrastination. If you don't do what must be done when it needs to be done, chances are you'll pay the price later. And truly, procrastination is expensive. When we think about distractions, it can be distracted thoughts. It can be distracted emotions. You know, as a young man, you know, I, you know, the, what does it say? A man should become what he thinks about all the time. Man, as a young man, it's one that amazing. I didn't become a woman because that's all I thought about. It may be habits that undermine. It may be associations. 
that are distractions. But whatever those things are, distracted thought, distracted emotions, distracting habits, distracting people, you got to get rid of them. And then finally, the sixth key to overcoming lack of focus is to take control of your body, your mind, your instincts, your emotions to such strength or degree that nothing and no one can deter you, can pull you off panel. Our emotions are probably the most difficult things to rein in. You know, that, that second stage of life, you know, the first stage of life is the stage of education where we learn the basics of life. The second stage is the stage of sensation where we get into the feeling nature. The third stage is the stage of power. And the fourth stage is the stage of immortality. When we get stuck in that second stage where our emotions run rampant, where our whole life is, life is revolving around what we want to feel, the, the, the physical things we want to experience, that can take us off focus. So when we follow these six steps, a couple of modifications I want to add. Number one, to be, once again, very aware of the nature of the yin and yang, that the moment you become more and more focused, the more focused you are, the more the negative world will respond to you. I call it the saboteur. And these, these negative things that keep coming up are there to undermine your ability. Look at some of the things the saboteur works. Distractions are one, but discouragement. You know, when you fail and fail again, you can lose focus because you decide you can't do it. Distrust. We, we look at accomplishing goals and necessary. Very often we need other people. We need to put the, a higher order of power, the mastermind principle in the work. So two or more gather on one accord. If you distrust, distrust everybody, you can never get together with anybody to make things happen. Doubt. Doubt can undermine your ability. Doubt can undermine your ability to act. Doubt can paralyze you. Indecision. These are some of the tools of the saboteur to take you off focus. If you can't make a decision, then you can't be focused. Focus is about choosing what you will or will not do. Of course, procrastination, apathy. You know, we have to feel success. We have to feel relationships. And so when that apathy is there, if you just don't feel anything, then you're like that dog sitting on the nail. It's just hurting, but it ain't hurting that badly. Arrogance. You see, ego can drive us away from our blessings. We can be so interested in being right <laughs> that we can't see what is necessary to be done. So this idea that the saboteur, that there are vibrations, that there are weeds in the universe, and that you must be aware and you must take action to get rid of them. And then finally, the key to focus is self-discipline. If you do not have self-discipline, you cannot be focused. To have self-discipline means that you have taken possession of your mind in such strength or degree that your emotions, your instincts, and your body are under your control. Self-discipline is control from within. Without self-discipline, it's very difficult to be successful. You may hit it sometimes, but over time, self-discipline, Ricky Young used to say, self-discipline is the bridge between dreams and results. One of the, the great examples of self-discipline, one thing that I find destroys focus in so many people is anger. Sometimes I meet young people and they say, well, he has a temper. So what does that mean? That means he lets his anger or she lets her anger override everything. And a moment of anger can change your life forever. 
And so you must be so self-disciplined so that you can control anger because anger will make you lose focus every time. So let's wrap it up. Let's pull it all together. That in order to achieve focus and achieve the things we desire in life, recognize that life is based on principles, order, and choice over time. And so whatever happens to you as a result of the order of the universe, the principles by which it operate, and your choices on how to interact with those principles. Two, your attention, that which you give your energy to, and your intention, that which you desire, your why, must be on one accord must be in harmony. When your attention and your intention are in harmony, you become magnetic, attracting into your space all that you desire. Three, what you recognize, you energize. Whatever you give your attention to, you energize, you create a vibration. And whatever vibration you create, you realize. You can create joy, you can create sadness. You can create life. You can create death. What you recognize, you energize. What you energize, you realize. Follow the six keys to overcome lack of focus. To remember that you can only do one thing at a time. To be in good health, physically fit, full of energy. To have clearly defined goals that complement your vision and your purpose. To have faith in yourself and in your ability. To realize that all distractions are equal and equally counterproductive. And then finally, to control your body, your instincts, and your emotions. Develop your self-discipline so that you can always be in control. So that your mind, your body, your emotions are always in control. Develop your self-discipline so that you choose to think positive thoughts. Develop your self-discipline so that you choose to entertain and live positive emotions. Develop your self-discipline so that you choose to eliminate bad habits and replace them with good habits that uplift you and empower you. And that you choose to surround yourself with people who love you, who respect you, who uplift you, and who help you move on to your higher good. When you can maintain focus, whatever you focus on grows. So grow success, grow love, grow prosperity, grow good health, grow all the things that you want to be, you want to do, and you want to have, always knowing that the best is yet to come. So it is.